With his ability, his mouse wheel up for me, which is his fire ability, the damage one, you can shoot it at range. I didn't even know that, dude. So apparently you can... Bro, I didn't even know that. Imagine, hypothetically, this could happen a lot, right? Imagine someone plants the bomb right there, right there. behind the behind the thing, uh, and they're holding it. They're holding on the bomb. Like, I can go like this, pull up my gun, and headshot them if they try and peek out. It's like uh, throwing a nade. So I, I didn't realize, like, this is really, really good for just, like, zoning people. Where exactly is counter strafing? All right, so counter strafing is where... Just so you guys know, there's three different ways of moving in this game. There's crouching, where your cross area is like really accurate. There's walking, where it's a little less accurate. And then there's running. And you see how inaccurate my my shot is? Well, counter strafing is where you're running around the corner. Like, right, I'm running around the corner. But as soon as I go to shoot, I hit the opposite direction. So I'm sprinting to the right, shoot, hit left. Shoot, move left. Shoot, move left. Shoot, move left. Shoot, move left. So you're like canceling all your momentum by going the opposite direction. And and your shot is completely accurate. So if someone is, for example, this is really, really important. If someone is holding this angle right here, like this, and he's ready for me to peek, it's much, much, much easier for him to shoot and kill me if I'm walking around the corner like this. But if I wide swing fast and then counter strafe, it's way harder for him to shoot me when I'm over here moving quick than it is for him to slowly, you know, for me to slowly walk around the corner and him predict me at this perfect angle. So when you're peeking corners in this game, counter strafing is one of the, the number one things you can learn. It's seriously, it's so important because you don't want to be a person that always just does this around corners. Like you don't want to just walk around corners like this. Like, sprinting around corner is really, really important because you can move a lot quicker. makes it a lot harder for people to hit you. But you got to learn how to counter strike so you can uh, hit your first shot. You could also, like, add crouching into it. You see how, like, I'm sprinting around the corner, but all of my shots are all hitting right there? I can even do it without, without, uh, without crouching. So, if that was someone's head... Even though I'm moving faster on the corner, it's still really accurate. But this is like some decent practice that you guys can do. If you do want to practice on your own, uh, what you should do is like, especially if you want to practice counter strafing, um, just go around the maps and go to spots that are high playable spots. So this spot right here is very playable, right? Like everyone starts at the beginning on defense here and everyone on attack plays here. And what you can do is you just pick something. So like pick like uh, that that edge right there like that bullet spot so you can practice your counter shaping when you go around the corner just try and try and hit that every time like practice like that's someone's head you can do the opposite so like just randomly on the map be like all right so i'm gonna shoot the left side of that frog's eye that's what i want to hit that's someone's head but so i'm counter shaping around the map and get, I'm gonna try and hit that every time. You can even like change your crosshair movement, but you always have that one spot you want to shoot at. So you can like do it up here. Let's just say hypothetically you're on attack because you're gonna be running into these situations a lot. If you're on attack, you want to peek this corner. Let's say that that white little sign right there is someone's head. So you just want to practice like. It also helps you learn the maps a lot. All the bullets went right there. See? Really good for practice. Who would stand there? It's not about who would stand there. It's about like you just picking a spot to aim at that you want to consistently shoot at. Um, so like someone would stand right. Um, someone could stand right here. I mean, someone would stand here. This is definitely a play playable spot. When you're on defense, you have a couple different angles on height. You can keep peeking like this. Shooting this little, like, sign is just, like, a, a spot for you to aim. Like, really, you'd be shooting right here. But, you know, it's just a spot that is not a person that you can aim at. That's probably, I think, if I were to give tips, uh, like, two very important tips to people in Valorant that are new to the game or just not very good. It's learn crosshair placement and it's learn counter strafing. Very, very important. Those two things. Those two things. 
And what I mean by crosshair placement is whenever you watch a new player, what what do they do when they run around chat? They go like this. They walk around the corner and they're like this. So like crosshair placement, what I'm talking to you, what I mean by this is always have your crosshair up at head level in a spot that you predict someone will be at. So when you're walking around the corner, just be like this. You know, upper level. You see how like I'm, my crosshair is constantly at a spot where I think they might be? Like always assume someone is where you're about to look. That's, that's the one of the biggest thing. Another thing where I talked about is counter strafing. That's when you're sprinting to the side. And if you want your crosshair to be accurate, you just go, you just straight the opposite direction and stop. So it's like you're, I'm holding, I'm uh, moving to the right. I'm sprinting. I'm holding D to move to the right. If I want to stop and get my crosshair to shoot accurate, I'm just going to let go of D and I'm going to hit A. See? This is so I can peek a corner really quickly instead of going like this. Like this is really slow. This makes it a lot easier for someone to hit me. That's another thing. That's probably the third most important thing um, is controlling your spray. So the best thing you can do for this for practicing is just, you know, pick a wall. Take your hand off the keyboard. Don't move the mouse and shoot the gun. You see how the, the Valorant or the the vandal shoots it starts here it goes up then it goes left then it goes right then it goes left then it goes right then it goes left then it goes right that's the pattern so what you want to do typically is you want to have your crosser at head level and then you pull down a little bit and then after you shoot that much you usually just let go like you know let's be real you can't really control a left right spray that accurate maybe you can get good enough to control it maybe i'm just shitty but i usually just control as much as possible to get that many shots off. So it's it's pretty easy to be honest. You just you usually just pull down. For the most part, you just pull down. Maybe a little bit to the right. Let's see. Okay, so you pull down a little bit to the right. Because the first thing your your spray does is it goes upward left. So if you pull down and then aim a little right, the the shots that are supposed to go left, they'll since you're pulling right, it'll still go center. So pull down a little bit, then pull a little bit to the right. And then stop shooting or whatever. If you have to keep shooting, then you, you know, keep pulling to the left. But it's hard to, you know, if you overcompensate, if your shot starts going left and you're pulling left, then you're gonna go like this. You're gonna, you're gonna go, you're gonna go like that. Because if it's going left already, then you pull left again. It's gonna be like that. It's all about countering the the recoil control or spray spray pattern. I mean, do we crouch spray or does that matter? That's one of the things I'm not too sure because like I didn't play CS. This is all information that I'm just picking up as I go. Um, which is very important still. Um, but I think I think crouch shooting is good. And I was told that crouch shooting is, it happens a lot. But I don't think it happens as much as you really think. Crouching is good for getting your crosshair to be... Um, your shots to be more accurate. Um, because you're stopping your movement. It slows your movement. And you see like watch. Let me show you. You see how... Watch my, you see the, the black dots around my crosshair, right? That shows the inaccuracy of my shots. So if I'm, if I'm standing still, this is my crosshair. My shots are pretty accurate. If I'm moving, that's my shots. If I'm crouching, that's my shots. You see how the difference between moving and crouch moving? It's a little bit more accurate. Just a little bit. So it helps a little bit. But I think a problem with crouching is that if... Let's say you're fighting someone one on one and they go to aim at your body like the most most gamers will. Let's be real, like most gamers that play this game, they're going to aim at the body because not everyone is a CS:GO pro, not everyone's a Valorant pro, not everyone is insane at this game accuracy wise. Most people aim for the body. So if you go to crouch, where's their crosshair going to be? If they're aiming at your body and you crouch, they're going to shoot you in the fucking forehead is that you can't shoot while running obviously so what i was doing was i was just crouching as soon as i saw someone i was just crouching because when you crouch it slows your movement 
it also makes your shots a little bit more accurate because look at the difference between this and this you see the difference uh, how much more accurate it is this is just random bullets but this a little bit more accurate so at the very beginning level like if you're just getting into the game hitting crouch can help you a lot all right so watch what happens when i'm when i'm sprinting i'm running Right, now, now watch what happens when I'm walking. What was the difference, chat? What was the difference? No sound. Really important. Watch what happens when I walk. And I take the zip and then I sprint. So I'm walking, I'm walking, I'm walking, taking the zip, quiet, sprinting, making noise. So you, you could walk, take it, no noise. And if I sprint while I'm on the zip, it still makes the noise. This is really important because you don't want people to hear you sometimes when you're going up the zip. Let's say you're they planted the bomb and you're trying to get into A and there's a, you know there's a guy playing here. Like you don't want to sprint up the zip and give him the noise because then he's going to peek and shoot you as you're going up. So you want to go down the zip maybe. Wait. Also, you hear that? That's another that's another important tip. Watch what happens when you walk off the ledge. They can hear that. If anyone's in that room over there, or anyone's in that room, they can hear that. So what you can do is you walk, you take the zip down, you let go of it, you take the zip up, you let go of it, I made no noise. But what a lot of people will do is they'll, you know, they'll sprint into this room, they'll drop off, that's noise, they'll walk up, they'll sprint up the zip, that's another noise. And also, bee hopping it's as far as i know it's only helpful in this game for for jumping through um sage's slow ability i think that's the primary thing for it i haven't figured out if it's like really 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 helpful for if it's actually super necessary i think going around a corner might be a little bit helpful if you're trying to cross a corner that you let's say you're forced to cross this corner right here no matter what like you're forced to run from what? here to here. Friends, yep. You know, instead of sprinting across, it might be harder for them if you B hop because it'll make your body a little bit harder to, to you know, get shot at or get hit or get headshot. Um, so that is a benefit of B hopping. Um, but you can do that with spacebar. You don't have to have your your keybind on mouse wheel. Um, my my flash is my left mouse click, and my stun is my other mouse click. And the reason I do this, I put all of my keybinds on my mouse like that, is because I'm not going to be shooting when I'm using my abilities. So it's no problem if I have to take my thumb off the side of my mouse to click an ability, or take my middle finger and use my mouse wheel, or use my index finger on my mouse wheel. It's fine. Um, and I want to focus my keybinds on my mouse on my keyboard with my left hand. This is my left hand, by the way. Um, I have inverted camera. My keyboard hand. I want it to be only on movement. But my fingers are always on W, A, S, D. My pinky is on shift, so I can sprint whenever I want. And my thumb can either crouch or it can jump. And then my primary is Q, and my secondary is E, and my knife is C. How's that your left hand? I have an inverted camera too, so I have it showing the gameplay, towards the gameplay. This is my right hand. This is my left hand. My keyboard is over here. My mouse is right here. It's just inverted on the camera. Uh, positioning is holding angles where you only have to hold one angle at a time, but you have options for others. And what I mean by that is, uh, let's, let's go to the A bomb point. So let's say, let's say you are uh, you plant the bomb and you're, you're right, you're, you're on the, you have the bomb right here and you're holding near the point. Um, there's a lot of different angles you can hold here. So this one is pretty good. Um, because you can watch a lot of different stuff and you have cover behind this, this thing. Let's say a bad player after they plant the bomb. They'll hold 
they'll hold like right uh they'll hold like right here they'll hold like right here so the reason this spot is really bad is because yeah you do have cover but the problem is you can watch this but you don't really have line of sight up here so if someone just walks out of the window and walks up above you like the only thing you can really do about it is constantly turn around and look up but if you try and back up and peek it you, you're open to die from there you're open to die from there or if someone's already out then they can shoot you from different angles so positioning is really important because you want to have spots that you can defend but also not be vulnerable to other spots at the same time so a strong spot you know, this might not be the strongest spot, but this is just for an example. If you plant the bomb right here, and you're holding this, you can kind of control that angle. You can control this angle. And whenever you're, like, going to support this angle, no one else can shoot you. If you want to move against the wall, you can re-peek right here. And you can see that angle. And if you want to go over here, you can peek this. So that way, you want, whatever angle you're peeking, you always have safety from the other angle. Like, the only way someone's going to be able to kill you from one side or the other is if they peek, like, for, like, four seconds and move around a corner. And if you're constantly moving back and forth, they can't just, like, you know, if they sprint, you're going to hear them. If they're walking, you're going you're gonna to be able to time yourself well enough to where you can see them walking toward you. Um, they can wallbang that. It's true. They can wallbang this. This is why I'm saying it's, this might not be the best spot. This is just an example I'm using to where you can control different angles without giving line of sight of other angles. You can also like wide swing like this um and also another movement tip um you move quicker with your knife guys than you move with your gun you see how i move quicker with my knife than i move with my gun this is important obviously if you're running you if you're going across the map you want to pull out your knife if no one is near you like if you know for sure that there's four people that right are at there. b and they all plant to the bomb and no one else is anywhere on the map obviously i want to have my knife out and i want to be running to get to the other side of the point another thing is if you're watch the mini map right here guys at the top left you see how i'm walking and you see my character and it shows like that little that little light in front of me whenever stuff is happening in that light like if you see a if a bomb is down and i'm looking at it it'll show that on the mini map it'll show the bomb if i'm not looking at the bomb if i'm looking at the wall it won't show the bomb so if i peek it'll show the bomb if it's down on the mini map now it won't so my teammates can't see it um but that's the tip i was trying to get to is that watch what happens when i sprint look at the mini map do you guys see the little circle on the mini map what do you guys think that means this is the sound of how far someone can hear you when you're running so if you know for sure that someone is right uh let's say they're at the the zip line right there They're, you heard them coming or something they're at the zip line or someone called it out and you're over here and you want to try and wrap around so they're they're right here at the zip line and you want right to wrap there. around you can run and you know they won't be able to hear you because you can see on the mini map where your circle is that's making noise and if they're if they're there then you the circle gets toward them and you stop running just like i said you run faster with the knife compared to running with the gun what you can do if you're in this position, for example, and you have the bomb down, you can peek with your knife just to get information. If you think there might be a guy up top, you just peek with your knife real quick just to get information because it's faster than peeking with your gun. And if he's like watching right here and he's, he's trying to shoot you, if you peek with your knife, you're not trying to shoot him back. All you're trying to do is get information. You just go like this just to get information. If you know he's there, then maybe you can consider doing like a counter straight peek to shoot him. But remember, information is king. Information is always the most important thing in competitive play. So you, you can peek with your knife instead of peeking with your gun. Because it's faster and it's less likely for you to die if you're just trying to get information. Do we need to 180 and one swipe and violent? You do. If you're shooting someone and you're getting flanked, you're gonna have to that wasn't 180, obviously, but you're gonna have to you're gonna have to do learn how to do 180s because if if you're in a 1v2 situation and there's no way you can get out of fighting both of them let's say they push you at the same time and you kill this guy you might have to 180 real quick and then kill that guy immediately after 180 is pretty important that's why you need to get a sense that 
is good enough for you to do a swipe to the right to do a consistent 180 every time i'm probably gonna have to increase my sense not because i can't do 180s but because if i if i were to ever play at lan when you play at lan like right now i have an arm length worth of mouse pad like a pretty fucking long distance like three fucking feet at lan you have like a foot and a half or a foot you know you don't you don't have that much space so if i go like this i'm probably gonna send my teammate to the hospital because i'm gonna break his fucking arm if i try and swipe and do a 180 i'm gonna knock my teammate out we're gonna be down a man we're gonna have to try and 4v5 every single round every time i have to do a 180 i'm gonna give my teammate a concussion and you know we're gonna lose what is land land is like uh when you're playing a tournament in person like if i'm playing at twitchcon in person at a table and i have all my teammates next to me you don't have a lot of space it's just it's just never is there ever been a land where you have space chat for some reason like esports it's like the most important thing you need your own fucking space to play and they give you these little like airplane seats and you're like this yo they're they're ct they're the rapid they're in they're on zip and you're like you're like tucked up like this you're like shoulder to shoulder you like never have space Couch jumping there's sometimes there's spots in this map especially when you use like boosting abilities like if you're you're playing raise the new character raise if you see for the ground um can i change my my character by the way is that possible no it's not if you see for the ground it can boop you up in the air like just like jet has like a lift ability on raise if you see for the ground you can boost yourself in there sometimes the boost isn't enough to get you to where you want to go like you'll boost up and then you'll just go like this and you'll fall back down but what you can do is you can you can jump with the boost and then if you crouch it'll make your character smaller so it'll pick you up just enough to where you can get onto the ledge so like this like you jump and then you crouch so does that make sense chat so with the boost, when you crouch, your character's a little bit smaller, so your legs can get on the ledge. It's kind of like if you're in the gym and you're trying to jump up onto a thing. Um, let's see. So this guy right here, he's standing here and he's trying to jump on top of the, this ledge right here. Watch what happens to his body when he jumps up. He jumps up, he's max, max verticality from feet to bottom. And then watch what he does. He pulls his body closer together with his feet. And you see how small he is? This is like jump crouching in Valorant. So he jumped in there, he's getting small, he's crouching, then he gets on the platform, and then he stands up. I love that this example is so fucking good for explaining jump crouching in a video game. <laughs> it's actually perfect. Alright, so that's that's all those things for jumping movement, all that stuff. Um, last, last general tip I'll give you guys is about buying. It's going to be a pretty basic one. Um, once you get into the, the middle of the game, let's say round like five or whatever, you know, round five to 10, a very general tip is that you want to use this up here. It says minimum next round. It means if no matter what, if I, if I don't buy anything else next round, I'll have $12,000. Um, if I get kills or bomb plant, then obviously I earn more, but if I just die at the beginning and I don't do anything, I'll have that much money at the beginning of next round a very very general tip is that you want to buy until you have 3900 left and the reason i say 3900 is because the vandal is 2900 and the armor is a thousand so if you have 3900 left you can buy an armor and you can buy a vandal and that's like doing a full buy almost very general tip it's not always right every round it's not you know it's just a very very basic general tip for a new player um you can you can save till you have you just buy until you have 3900 um you could also do it until you have 30 uh 3300 because then they, then you can buy a light armor and a vandal but you know typically you want to have full armor over a light Someone says the vandal and the phantom so these are the two best guns in the game the reason the vandal is better is because if you didn't know the vandal and the phantom are basically the exact same gun they're the same price they pretty much do exactly the same thing, but they're a little bit different based on versatility of your playstyle or character choice. The Vandal, if you look at the right, let's see if I can show this somehow. If you look at the right, it has the damage numbers, right? 
The damage numbers is 39 body, 156 to the head, which is a one shot. Even if they have armor, it's a one shot. 33 to the leg, zero to 50 meters. It shoots 8.32 seconds or rounds per second. The Phantom does almost the same thing, but it has a, a faster fire rate, 9.9 .9 rounds a second. So it's better, it has a faster fire rate. So it's better up close. Between 0 and 15 meters, it does 39 to the body, the same as the Vandal. Does 156 to the head, same as the Vandal. 33 to the leg, same as the Vandal. But it's only up to 15 meters. It's only up to 15 meters. So if you are 15 to 30 meters, or 30 to 50 meters, you can't one-shot someone in the head. Alt fire? Oh, that's... uh. Oh, my bad. Yeah, I read, the, I read the wrong thing. So, like, the fire rate of the Phantom is 11 rounds per second for primary fire. Um, 9.25 for the Venom. The point is, the Phantom shoots quicker. It has a faster fire rate, and it does the same amount of damage, 0 to 15 meters. So, the Phantom is strictly better than the Vandal, up to 15 meters. It's just better. There's no other way to, you know, compare it. Uh, it even has a higher magazine capacity. It has 30 bullets instead of 25. But once you get to 16 to 50 meters, that's when the Vandal is typically better because the Vandal can one-shot people. And in high level like pro play, you're always going to see people buying Vandal because you need to be able to one-shot someone at higher than six or the further than 16 meters because a lot of fights will happen further than 16 meters or 15 meters. So if you play a character that, you know, is always close range, if you if you play very aggressive, like Omen maybe, then maybe Phantom is your gun of choice. But if you try to take a long distance fight or even like a medium range fight, you might lose because if you headshot him with the Phantom and he headshots you with the Vandal at 20 meters, you're not going to kill him, but he's going to kill you. Make sense? This is what I love so much about the balancing and the guns is that both these guns are the same price and they're balanced so well. It's just versatility. That's one of the things that pissed me off so much about Apex is Apex just had a straight tier list of stuff. It was like, these guns are the best. Then depending on which gun you picked up, it was just worse and worse and worse and worse. It was never like, oh, this gun's good for this situation and this gun's good for this situation. It was just like, oh, R99, best gun in the game. I'm picking it up. PK, best shotgun, best secondary in the game, picking it up. There was never like a situation like, oh, maybe, maybe I should use EVA 8. It could be better here. Like, dude, you just you just pick up the PK. It's insane. Yeah, that's that's the tip on the uh, buying and stuff.